You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. Your name is Paul. Your name is Rob. And we're listening to an unknown episode of Ask Drone You. <laughs> we're going to call it 857. Okay. okay. Sounds like a Why good not? number. Thank you so much for joining us today, whether you're listening in the car, listening in bed, or you're waiting five hours in a bathroom to ask me a question. Well, wherever you are, don't creep. <laughs> Too late if that's the case. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, anyway, thank you for being with us. You really are the lifeblood of the show, so thank you. Yeah, thank you for all the questions. And you can do that at astronew.com whenever your question comes to mind. You can do it on your phone. That's a great thing about nowadays is if you have something that comes to mind, you can take care of it right away. And we'd love to hear from you, so please do so. Yes, please do so. Today we're going to be talking about... What are we talking about today, Rob? Talking about piloting skills. Uh, how do you vet a good pilot? That's a good question. How can you ascertain the flying ability of a drone pilot when even the FAA does not have a practical flying skills assessment? All right. Thank you very much for the question. I think it's a good question. How can somebody ascertain the piloting skills of a drone pilot? I, you know, I will say just because the FAA hasn't come out with something doesn't mean that that's not possible. Obviously, right? Um, they would be trying to do something for the masses, and I think, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure the the context of the question, but we could look at it from the perspective of maybe a company who's uh, creating a, a drone business and they're trying to bring in pilots to do some of the work for them, or maybe it's a realtor who wants to hire a pilot, but how can they tell what a good pilot is? Um, so there are various ways to look at this question, um, regardless of what the FAA has or has not done. So what are your thoughts on this? I'm loving your Navajo accent, the FAA. <laughs> you know what? So here's the thing. I think I got messed up last time. So I, I noticed that I did that, and I was just going to let it roll, but you didn't. No. <laughs> So and nor did sorry. they. So it's all good. No, it's it's funny. Anyways, I was watching this. I was just kind of flipping around for like 20 minutes last night, vegging. And I came across this Navajo comedian. No way. It was one of the funniest things. <laughs> he was sitting cross-legged. <laughs> talking about going into some uh, medicine man's presentation. I, I don't, I, forgive me, I don't know what it's called but he was just sort of describing the scene and it was hilarious. And literally I heard that accent for a while and I think it might be affecting me today. <laughs> so that's my excuse. <laughs> All right. Wh Anyways. What are we talking about? <laughs> we're talking about ascertaining the skills of a pilot. Ah, what were you saying about the FAA? What does the FAA have to do with it? I think a lot of people would love to see a practical test from the FAA on pilots, but yeah, right. But it, that, that's it, never going to happen. So, no, no that's, I don't think it's ever going to happen. You know? I think it's actually a very safe presumption to say it's never going to happen. Um, I've right. actually come up with a way that uh, I still am in the middle of patenting right now that I think could solve that problem. But I'm just not sure that they are on board for that. Okay, so fine. The FAA is out of the equation. I mean, like, let's also look at right the presentation during the fly-in from uh, Kenji Sugihara, who who talked about writing the new law for the reauthorization and how pretty much anyone, if the law passes, there is a micro drone rule in there that says if you're flying anything less than 4.4 pounds, you don't need a license. So I mean, like, they're. I think if it gets a backtrack. In all honesty, too, I've been like I've been secretly filming some jobs, and I've been using just a phantom because my eye too has been broken. Um, anyway, long story short, it, completing every job with a phantom is so much easier than an Inspire. But an Inspire does get better quality footage. There's no doubt about that. But when it comes to mapping and just general jobs, I mean, it's just so easy to use a phantom. And a phantom weighs what? Four. Uh, I think it's like four point two. Because a Mavic is only one point six pounds, which means an Air is even less than that. It'll be interesting to see what the Mavic 2 weighs, but it's not going to be much more than that, Hold most on. likely. Weight, battery, and propellers uh, included 1,388 grams. That's less than 2 kilos, so that's 3 pounds. So what this is saying, and, and I, this 
ties in somehow to the answer to this particular question, I'm sure. But what this is saying is that you could fly a Phantom 4 Pro, for example, and not have to be licensed and do it commercially. If, if the new law if passes. If that law passes. That, Keyword that, if. Yes, very. <laughs> Sorry, I know people are. I just am so afraid of being that like soundbite online. Know. You know what I mean? Like, I you don't know. need a license. Like, yes, Maybe you do. We just cut that out. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth it. <laughs> it's too risky. I don't want to be a soundbite, but if the new law passes, you will not need a license to fly anything below Phantom. Uh, could be bad, could be good. I don't know. There's, you know, there's such a lack of enforcement right now. I think this is actually the federal government saying it, it's almost impossible for us to control this right now. And if we rein it back, maybe then we can go forward from there and enact new laws. And they would, they do have, you know, new tighter restrictions on hobbyists in that law. Um, so it would be like if you're a commercial guy, you're you're peachy. But there are certain rules you have to follow. We'll so. see. Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, just you still need your 107 long and the short of it. That's right. So, all right. So, figuring out if a pilot is a good pilot. Yes. How's that gonna happen? All right. I feel bad for everyone listening to the show because we're just now finally getting into the answer of it. This shows why why it's a bad idea to podcast today. Okay. Number one, is the pilot following the three rules of takeoff and landing? If you don't know those rules, then you should go to the don't crash course because they're very important. And I've literally had people argue with me on those rules and crash drones on set in front of very important people. Okay, what are the rules? You can give those rules out. I think those rules are... No, no, because if I give it every rule that I'm going to go over in the next segment, we're going to be here all day long. Yeah, but that's just the three basic rules. Let's give them something. <sighs> Is the drone and the pilot facing the same direction? Are they taking off into the wind? Are they immediately taking off and moving away from themselves? Three questions. Seems pretty intuitive. Did but... the pilot do a pre-flight checklist? Did he check to see what the KP index is that day? Is he taking off near ferromagnetically charged materials? Is he doing a compass calibration? Here's the biggest one. This is how I literally can tell every pilot who's a complete and total noob. Did they do an IMU calibration before they flew? Seriously, though, because the most don't. Even the, yeah. even the experienced ones. There were 55 IMU calibrations at the flying. 55. Because of Peter. <laughs> yeah, because of Peter. No, but everyone's like, why is my horizon line drifting? When was last time you did an IMU calibration? So, But they weren't total noobs, so that's the point. No, the thing is, is that... And uh, you know what? It's really made me think, too, Rob, and I, and I forgot to bring this up yesterday in my conference call with you from the car. I think we should redo Drone You. Here's what you absolutely wow. need. No, no, no. Every class should be broken up into three things. Absolutely what you need to know, and you cannot move forward into another class until you know these things. What you should know, like the technical details, like how an ESC works, what are the systems, how do they crash, what are, you know, what are typical uh, problems that you could troubleshoot. What happens if your drone gets disconnected? How do you stop a flyaway? All those things, right? And then you would have the don't need to know. Yeah, so this is like that marketing concept that Tim came up with, actually, right? Applied well, to all of Drone U. Yeah, it was actually Ted Wilson who came up with the concept. Did Just, he? Yeah. Tim, we were, Ted. Ted was like, this is what you need to know, what you should know, and what you don't need to know. And then Tim at lunch was like, that's the new slogan. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's just so brilliant. And I was like, it is brilliant. Was, yeah. Let's go yeah. with it. Uh, my bad, Ted, because we loved it. No, but it was Tim's idea to continue it as a marketing theme, marketing yeah. theme. And it's important because it, it really harnesses what our culture is like in aviation and what I've figured out in all government testing, what you need to know, what you should know, and what you don't need to know because most government tests are not very practical. They're like, this is what we need to ensure that you understand for liability purposes. If that... I mean, uh, that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, more why of a weed out thing. Yeah. So, Anyways. long story short. So back to it before I rabbit hole again. Um, man, I'm horrible at this. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, three rules of takeoff and landing: pre-flight checks, IMU calibrations, compass calibrations. Um, let's see. Uh, heck, are they able to do banking turns? Do they know how to do um, an orbit or a turn about a point? Do they understand turning into the wind and turning out of the wind? Do they understand emergency procedures uh, if they have a battery failure? Do they understand emergency procedures for a lost link failure? Um, do they come up and communicate a plan to you before they fly to say, look, we're about to fly. If I have any problems, I'm going to dump the drone into that tree over there. Like how, 
and I say this because I guarantee 90% of the people to figure out if a drone is a good vetted pilot won't do those things. Probably not. That's, so, hence the question. That's why we have this whole drills and exercise course and the new Drone U Elite. If you want to get a training in your area, you can get on the Drone U obstacle course, the same obstacle course that literally was at the Drone U fly-in, and you can learn all these drills and exercises in real life. And guess what? Now you can order a training because they're live on our site. So guess what? Go order a training near you, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you can literally... Like, learn how to be a good vetted pilot by taking one of these courses. You can. That's that's absolutely true. Although, yeah, we're not we're not in as many places as we want to be, but we're getting there. Where are we right now? We're in Utah. We're in Wisconsin. We're in Houston, Texas. We're in Denver, Colorado, New York City. Um, hmm. Well, I'm missing a couple here. Jason, where's Jason? Jason, D.C. He's in D.C. My home. Mm. Homie. Jason, the Jason homie. Jason Flake's my homie from my hometown. He's such a cool dude. A couple in Utah. Yep. Here, Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah, we got New Mexico, Colorado, Texas, Utah, Wisconsin. We'll probably Vegas soon. And probably Hawaii soon, too. Probably Hawaii We're soon. probably going to have to make a visit and train that person in person ourselves. I'm just saying. Double check. <laughs> yeah, make sure everything is peachy. Since the FAA doesn't have any way to bet them. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways. Yes, I need to make a couple phone calls to those people actually. So. Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know. Is that the answer? Is that what we're going with? <coughs> I think I was you're a solid answer. Looking to find a, a pilot and figure out if they're a good pilot or not. I mean, you're gonna look at their footage and. How smooth is it? Are they actually taking the time to set up their video? Do you see a lot of aliasing in their video? Um, are they filming at too slow of a frame rate so their footage looks like crap? I mean, there are, is their shutter speed too fast? Are they using ND filters? I mean, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. And a good pilot is going to have habits and routines to just do these things without thinking. Straight up. So that answers that question. Thank you again for the reviews. If you haven't left us one, I know there are thousands of you who haven't left us one. It would really mean the world to me. little 30-year-old birthday gift, belated whatever you want to call it. Rob's birthday is coming up. Give it to him for his birthday, August 22nd. Happy birthday, Rob. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's the same birthday as my sister, right? You told me that, yeah. That's cool. It is cool. Is the sister that was here? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you met, oh, yeah. Nice I forgot girl. you met Liz. Isn't that crazy? Girl. I have a sister. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so guys, thank you just so much for listening in. Please leave us a review. It does help other people find the show. And the more people that we can genuinely educate here, the better off we all are. And I, and I cannot stress that enough. So anyway, thank you for listening very much. Uh, my name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Hey.